Good morning, everyone. Hello, hello. Uh, good morning, and welcome to the Morning Metaphysical Report. Today is December 14, 2019. Uh, my name is Lysander Xanthus, and today I will be sharing with you today's astrology, numerology, a card reading of the day, a crystal healing, and some other things. I like to start each morning with a little energy clearing and a blessing. So I will do that for us now. Release the tension from your jaw, tongue, head, neck, and shoulders. send my blessing to you. I bless you and I bless your day ahead. I send you peace and healing. Everyone will be helpful today. Today will be full of success, good company, and good experiences. You will love yourself just a little more today. You will find a little bit more of your path today. And you will naturally shed and leave behind anything else that is not serving you. I bless you and your path. Today, your wings will spread. Be blessed. So, now I would like to talk about the astrology for today. Um, the Sun is in Sagittarius, and so is Mercury. There is an emphasis on expanding our perspectives, expanding upon the way we think about things, the way we express ourselves, and the, uh, so the way we communicate with others. Um, so that's kind of where that influence is, and we may be considering things we've never thought about before and doing things in a new way. Jupiter, Venus, Saturn, and Pluto are in Capricorn. So if we are feeling limited or trapped in any situation, um, we're being asked to mature in that it's time to take responsibility for the choices we've made that have led us to our current situations and this is also the way to get out of them by being exercising and building our independence and self-sufficiency and not waiting for the other people or the situations to change of their own but for us to be the leaders of our own lives and to make those decisions for ourselves mars is in scorpio uh, lending us a push some initiative and drive for doing that. Uh, it is connecting us very intensely with our 
uh, true feelings about other people and situations in our lives. Neptune is in Pisces, so uh, we have our own intuition and instinctual knowledge that is rising to consciousness, and it is up to us how we would like to use that information. Good morning, everyone, in the comments. Uh, Taurus is in retrograde. Wait, no. I always say that. I'm sorry. Uranus is in Taurus in retrograde. So this is a time, a time of reassessing our comfort zones and if we would like to continue forward and persist the way that we have been. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm seeing some people from my other videos. Welcome. Um, the moon is just beginning to enter its waning and is in cancer. So our attention may be just slightly starting to turn inward and we are feeling very, we may be feeling more emotional, more sensitive, and uh, we can be in need of greater nurturing and tenderness at this time we may be needing more consideration, but uh, try to not lose sight of consideration for other people or perhaps of the situation overall in case you are overreacting. Um, but even if that is the case, honor your feelings. <laughs> and that is the astrology for today. Uh, now I will be sharing with you today's numerology. Let's focus over here. Today is a five day. A five vibration seeks freedom and adventure. The 14th of the month this is a five day, a day full of surprises. Anything is possible. Today will exude a sense of excitement and adventure. Uh, be spontaneous and take a chance. Uh, go somewhere you've never been to. Try something new. There's someone you and the office you've had your eye on, ask them out. This is a day to take a gamble and see what happens. Have fun today. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I, I put mine on and realized that that's what we need to do today. All right. And also, it's snowing out. Excellent. <laughs> uh, that is the numerology of uh, the day. It's pretty simple. So next will be the crystal healing. It looks like we have a question. Uh, Simi Watts says, hi, you follow moon or sun? Uh, I'm not sure that I follow your question. Uh, I follow all of the planets. Uh, the astrolog astrological chart, I'll show you guys real quick. As you can see, features all of the planets. The particular chart I use also features a few asteroids, but I don't cover those. So it covers the, uh, the main bodies concerned in astrology. Sandy says, I was born on a five day, 23. Indeed, you were. Okay. So next is the crystal healing of the day. And today's crystal is Kambaba Jasper. I'm going to be telling you about this crystal in just a moment. Uh, all Jasper has qualities of being nurturing and healing. Um, bye -bye. Jasper. 
So Kambaba Jasper is a stone of peace and tranquility imbued with the nourishing green energy of nature. Its dark mystic circles and deep green swirls comforts and protects, calms and relaxes, soothing troubled minds and restoring balance to body and spirit. Uh, all jaspers nurture in different ways, so that is how this one in particular does. If you would like to participate in this healing, all you need to do is uh, sit, breathe, relax, and allow yourself to enjoy, uh, receive the energy. It looks like we have an astrological question. So M.A. asks, is there an area one should focus on when searching for a desired job, but not knowing where to find it? Uh, your 10th house, the 10th house. Um, you'll have to consider the sign that rules the 10th house and the uh, planets in it, but that is the house of career. Uh, Simi Watt says, okay, I mean, Western astrology or Indian? Uh, Western, so like ancient Greek astrology. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the crystal healing and we'll address uh, comments after that.
was Kambaba Jasper. Thank you, Matthew, always for sharing. Tenth house, yes. One's birth chart is split into 12 segments, known as the houses, and they describe different areas of one's life. So the tenth house is for Korea. I don't know if that was a question. <laughs> Yes. Do you have an inbox? I'm not an expert, but I can share some some things. All right. Next, we are going to be doing our daily affirmation. Now that we've taken in this healing energy, it's good to do something that allows us to sit in that energy for a moment. is a great affirmation. So I am going to be reading this to you the first few times. because so I really want you to focus on hearing the words and listening to them rather than focusing on saying them. Thank you for coming. I am going to take a sip because I am for watching. All right, so take a moment to sit where you are. Center yourself. And all that means is to basically be you where you are. What is it like to be you right now? Draw your attention to your breath. And just listen. I claim my own power. I lovingly create my own reality. I claim my own power. I lovingly create my own reality. You claim your own power. You lovingly create your own reality. You claim your own power. You lovingly create your own reality. Now, uh, let's say it together three times. I claim my own power. I lovingly create my own reality. I claim my own power. I lovingly create my own reality. I claim my own power. I lovingly create my own reality. I invite you to carry this affirmation with you forward into the day. This affirmation comes from Heal Your Body by Louise Hay. It is one of the many spine affirmations. Uh, spine pertains to issues of feeling supported in life in all the ways that that can mean and I feel as though most of us have issues of some sort relating to support so I thought these would all be great affirmations for us to use. Also, uh, I love my cup too. <laughs> okay, let's leave this screen. So this is just the back side. It's Mine. <laughs> the side's more cute, but I'm not used to holding my drink in my left hand. If 
you live in California, you well, I don't know if they'll still have it, but I got it at Daiso. <laughs> yes, yeah, so if you live felt good today. Mm. Uh, but next is our card reading of the day. So I will be reading, doing a card reading for you all that will give you guidance and insight about the day ahead. Now I just need to choose a deck. So today's reading is going to come from the Psychic Tarot Oracle Deck. Now let's see what it has to say to us today. These cards are almost too big to shuffle horizontally. start to think, are you going to make me draw from you? And then I flip some cards over. <laughs> you do something good with that energy today. Don't just sit on your butt. <laughs> 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 it's a... That's what the kitchen looks like. I'm not to... Sometimes I share a magic tip and I wasn't going to, but that reminds me of something. Speaking of sitting on one's butt, um, when you use spiritual or magical tools, for example, the good fortune incense, or uh, maybe something like an intuition oil, or you do a spell for a result, some of these things don't really do you as much good if you don't actually do the thing they're intended for. That may seem silly, but sometimes people use them and then not do anything. So, uh, like using in intuition boosters are best used if you're about to actually do a reading or engage your intuition actively, or if you're just practicing using it. Uh, and things pertaining to fortune, it's good to fill yourself with fortune energy, especially if you're about to work or you intend on doing it doesn't mean you can't do it and then do it. I'm not saying you can't use those things and then do nothing. I'm just saying you might see more results out of your tools um, as you use them as the boosters they're intended to be. Well, we have a lot of cards today. <laughs> 
normally I like to read each entry. I don't know that I will today. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cards. Uh, that is okay, though. I don't know. Maybe I will read the entries after all. Let's just see. How so, these two cards are a thought together. Move the mic. So, patience and planning and discontent and boredom. I'm watching them on the camera, but my hands are moving too much. I'm sorry. I'm shaking hands. So, these two cards discuss the idea of needing, obviously, to be patient and to plan, and the reason is because of discontent and boredom. We can definitely have a way of becoming complacent in our situations that we're not happy with and just kind of maybe not feeling motivated to do anything or becoming discouraged in our plans to move forward or discouraged about our goals. But uh, it is important to persist and to plan ahead, persevere, and attend to details to combat that. Interesting array. I feel as though, you know, these are the cards, but I feel as though it would be better to read the entries. Uh, you may find that some of this reading applies to you, or all of it does. So, starting from the top, this may take a while, but it's going to be good stuff, I promise. Patience and planning. These cards are very shiny, so the light's going to reflect on Good things come to those who wait. This card signifies the qualities of patience and letting go of control. You should now pause, rest, assess, and rethink what's in front of you before continuing. The number seven physical card reminds you to reevaluate the goals that you're seeking, your finances, and even your relationships. Take the time to review each area one by one, for there's no rush when you're planning for a successful future. As you pause during this period, notice what has worked well for you in the past. Not what you or others believe to be true, but in actual positive experiences. While you're at this reflecting stage, you can stand back and plan how you're going to handle potentially difficult, complex decisions and situations that may arise in the future. Hi, love. I had to take the letters out to the mailbox. I almost forgot. Oh, yeah. So I'd have to play it. Great. Discontent and boredom. This card signifies a time when you may experience stagnation, discontent, and boredom. Feelings of restless, restlessness and impatience surround you. A relationship, project, or situation isn't moving forward fast enough and could be draining you emotionally and energetically. You're longing for change, and although one door may be closing, don't focus all your energy on it as opportunity will soon knock. A window or another door could quickly open, and if your attention and awareness isn't focused, you could easily miss it. Watch for synchronistic events that bring new things into your life. Any, any of these could possibly hold a message for you. Have faith in divine timing and know that everything changes for a reason. This card acts as a reminder that it's a perfect time to reevaluate and search within your heart and soul for fresh insights. Therefore, patience and planning. 
So that's first. Now, material harvest. The nine card reading today, love. Oh my goodness. Mm. I was going to just interpret them, but I really feel like the whole entry is very useful. So here we go. Material harvest. One of the laws of the universe is what you sow, you reap. This card states that this is your time to reap the harvest you've worked for and so rightly deserve. This last physical card denotes self-mastery, self-sufficiency, independence, security, and the art of enjoying what you've strived for. <coughs> Excuse me. You've done the hard work, learned the lessons along the way, and used them to prosper in all areas of your life. The number nine also means endings, not that good fortune necessarily stops, but you honor yourself as you finish up or celebrate the completion of projects. This would be the perfect time to look ahead and use the wisdom you've gained to think about what else you want to achieve. Consider smart investments and ponder ideas that show profitable potential. Congratulations on your success. You've earned it. So just a reminder, the first two cards were one thought. So now we're on a new thought, starting with this card. So the second thought is three cards. Next one is fertility. Through this card, the manifest manifestation of growth is on the horizon. You are the creator and the seeds that have been planted in the past, whether they were happiness, comfort, abundance, prosperity, family, children, ideas, or even thoughts are now ready to give birth into your world. Be patient as you watch your seeds take root and grow. Nurture them as they become strong and healthy. Open yourself to the life force of the universe. This card also represents femininity and Mother Earth, who is calling to you. The arms of her beauty are reaching out. She wants to embrace her, you on her seashores, mountains, forests, and gardens. Go to her and meet her halfway. Acknowledge that the same energy that makes up the heavens, earth, Plants, animals, and mineral kingdom is also part of you. Start nurturing yourself and infuse your soul with love and compassion. Soon others will see and feel your devotion. As you interact with others around you now, or even if you're in the midst of solving a problem, use gentle care and kindness as you handle such, such situations. This isn't a time for you to be inconsiderate, possessive, domineering, forceful, or pushy. Act from the loving space of your heart center. The benevolent energy that resides there will assist you in making sacrifices in order to care for and help others as well as yourself. And this is followed by spiritual union. This card deals with relationships involving an emotional bond. It could be between new lovers, kindred souls, family members, friends, business associates, or partners. It could even relate to a project or a specific situation. This would be the perfect time to realize that all relationships are really about you. Notice when you interact with different people in your life. Are they giving you energy or taking it away? <coughs> or taking it away? Is there an even exchange? There should be an equal balance between giving and receiving energy. Relationships are mere images of your own life. They reflect how you feel and treat yourself and how you react and respond to various situations and individuals around you. Each and every union is an opportunity for soul growth. So I feel that those three parts are another thought. They are discussing different aspects of what we create for ourselves and how. 
Uh, we are at the end and beginning of a a part of our lives, of a cycle. Um, so whatever you have created for yourself in the past, you're going to be experiencing. And even as one harvests, one is sowing still. So even though you are manifesting some of the things you put into motion, whether you meant to or not in the past, even now you are planting seeds and it's important to be aware of that. It's important to be aware also of how everything reflects yourself um, so that you can be more aware of what it is you're planting and reaping. Would you say that's a fair way to t tie those together? Yeah. Probably not listening. <laughs> I, I am listening. I'm just surprised you asked for I value your opinion, my love. Fiance is sitting. All right, and uh, now we're moving on to the third thought, which begins with a card called Spiritual Strength. This card is coming forth to give you encouragement and remind you that you have the inner strength to complete whatever you've been working on. This final spirit card represents courage, discipline, stability, and persistence. You may be tired or weary from the struggle, but now is not the time to give in. Instead, tap into all of your inner reserves for that one final push to achieve the desired outcome. You've been through so much to get to this point. And even though you may have acquired some scars from the battle, you're wiser and stronger for it. The enlightenment you've gained will be an invaluable resource. You may also notice that you're experimenting with different things in your life at this time. All these experiences feed your spirit and offer you knowledge for the future. card is universe. Uh, welcome Ian, you are just over halfway through. The video will be available for replay. Second card is universe. You've come far on your journey and it's time to be rewarded for your efforts. This card symbolizes completion, triumph, peace, liberation, and fulfillment. Everything you strive for is within your reach. Meet it halfway and grab it. The universe is the last of the major arcana cards and reflects the work that you've accomplished on your travels. But more importantly, it represents the wisdom you've gained along the way. You should now honor and acknowledge the truly wonderful soul that you are and accept the vital part you play in the bigger scheme of life. The world is yours to command and you're free to travel in whatever direction your heart desires. You are connected to everything in the cosmos. The universe card is a reminder that the same energy making up the stars in the sky, the same energy that's coursing through the universe is in each and every individual. In ancient times, many believed that each star was the soul of one person. They also believe that these souls shine so brightly to guide others through the darkness. And so too can your wise soul. third card in this thought is emotional withdrawal. These cards are just so, so shiny. This card represents moving away or withdrawing from a current situation in your life, whether it's an old love, a relationship, or leaving behind what was once familiar in search of new horizons or beginnings. On a physical level, it's easy to get caught up in the materialistic world, but it's just as important to retreat from the outside world to enable you to pause, reflect, and heal. 
Schedule some alone time so you can commune with your soul and give the power of spirit the opportunity to restore your energy level, giving you the vitality to move forward in a positive direction. And number eight represents infinity, passion, control, and power. This is your time. Use this opportunity to tap into your heart and soul in order to find the courage and strength to continue their, your journey into that wonderful undis undiscovered turf. Uh, so kind of, uh, this third thought is saying, uh, dig deep. Dig deep in this final push and uh, on this step of coming into greater fruition of yourself and your journey and to overcome whatever it is you're faced with right now. I feel as though, so there, this is three separate thoughts that we've covered. I feel as though that each single thought may be meant for different individuals. Although for some of you, all of it may possibly apply. The last thought is a single card. Is fulfillment of wishes. This card, being one, if not the most positive of the minor arcana cards, represents emotional satisfaction, contentment, and enjoyment. Your wishes are coming true. Are you ready? Happiness, success, good health, completion, and accomplishment of your dreams and goals are in the palm of your hand. This card acts as a reminder to hold on to the beneficial feelings from accepting and receiving what you've asked or strived for. Know that these will assist you in the future when you may need inspiration and positive energy. This is the right time to heal those past memories that have been holding you hostage. Forgive others and yourself so that your wishes, desires, and goals have a clear, unobstructed path to your heart, soul, and life. And somehow I feel that this is for everyone, and it's meant to be the end of all these thoughts. So that is today's guidance. I do hope that it was helpful. So I'm going to put this deck away. Next, we are going to be doing our reading for the day. Not card reading, but reading from a book. I'm gonna, so, 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 we're going to be reading from The Power is Within You by Louise Hay, and right now we are reading through the chapter, reprogramming old tapes, as in reprogramming your mind, the, just kind of like those old tapes or records or playing over and over again of uh, ways we think and react. This is part of a greater discussion of manifesting the things that we want in our lives, but a big part of learning to use magic or the law of attraction better is healing ourselves and being uh, aware of ourselves and growing. I'm going to start begin the reading in just a moment. I just really want more coffee. Mm. Besides, I should probably take a moment for you to kind of take in everything the card said, because it was a lot. Thank you. <laughs> I, I love this cup a lot. I usually use the Christmas cup. Uh, this one's really fun. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> oh, also, there's a little fish on the inside. There is a little fish. I forgot about that. Name. All right. So to continue, ordering from the cosmic kitchen. When you first say an affirmation, it may not seem true. But remember, affirmations are like planting seeds in the ground. When you put a seed in the ground, you don't get a full grown plant the next day. We need to be patient during the growing season. As you continue to say the affirmation, Either you will be ready to release whatever you don't want, and the affirmation will become true, or it will open a new avenue to you. Or you may get a brilliant brainstorm, or a friend may call you and say, have you ever tried this? You will be led to the next step that will help you. Keep your affirmations in the present tense. You can sing them and make a jingle out of them so that they repeat over and over in your head. Remember that you cannot affect a specific person's actions with your affirmations. To affirm that John is now in love with me is a form of manipulation and it is trying to have control over another person's life. It will usually have a boomerang effect on you. You will become very unhappy when you don't get what you want. You can say, I am now loved by a wonderful man who is, and list the qualities you want in the relationship. That way, you allow the power within you to bring to you the perfect person to fill, the, fill that bill who may possibly be John. You don't know what another person's spiritual lesson is, and you don't have a right to interfere in their life process. You certainly wouldn't want someone else doing it to you. If someone is ill, bless them and send them love and peace. Don't demand that they get well. I like to think of doing affirmations as placing our, our order in the cosmic kitchen. If you go to a restaurant and the waiter or waitress comes and takes your order, you don't follow them into the kitchen to see if the chef got the order or how he is going to prepare the food. You sit and drink your water or coffee or tea or you talk to your friend and maybe eat your roll. You assume that your food is being prepared and will be out when it is ready. It's the same when we begin to do affirmations. When we put our order into the cosmic kitchen, the great chef, our higher power, is working on it. So you go on with your life and know it is being taken care of. It's on order, it's happening. Now if the food comes out and it isn't what you ordered, and if you have self-esteem, you will send it back. If not, you will eat it. You also have a right to do that with the Cosmic Kitchen. If you don't get exactly what you want, you can say, no, that's not quite it. This is what I want. Perhaps you weren't clear in your ordering. The idea, uh, the idea here, too, is to let go. At the end of my treatments and meditations, I use the words, and so it is. It is a way of saying, higher power, it's in your hands now, I release it to you. Spiritual mind treatment, which is taught by the science of mind, is very effective. You can obtain more information about it through your local religious science church, <laughs> or through books by Ernest Holmes. So it actually yes, it actually says that. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> No obligation to do that. However, I have done that and have benefited from doing so. <laughs> yeah. Even though we're pagan, we are fans <laughs> of the religious uh, science church. Science of mind. All right. Reprogramming the subconscious mind. I'm going to read a little more before stopping. Reprogramming the subconscious mind. The thoughts we think accumulate, and when we are unaware, 
the old thought resurfaces. When we are reprogramming our minds, it is normal and natural that we go a little forward, we come a little back, and we go a little forward again. It is part of practicing. I don't think there's any new skill that you can learn absolutely 100% in the first 20 minutes. Do you remember when you first learned how to use a computer, how frustrating it was? It took practice. You had to learn how it worked to learn its laws and systems. I called my first computer my magic lady, for when I mastered her role, she did indeed deliver what seemed like magic to me. Yet while I was learning the way she would teach me I was off track or going the wrong direction was to devour pages of work that I would then have to do over again. Out of all the mistakes, I learned how to flow with the system. To, <laughs> oh, me. Or, Iris. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, man, I don't even have the self-esteem to send food back in real life. Oh, no! <laughs> You're paying for it? <laughs> I think we all struggle with that at some point in our lives. I Feeling actually, bad about sending food back in a rest in a literal restaurant. You know, I, I had a hard time with that until I worked in a restaurant and I realized that they aren't working as hard as they seem to be. Yes. And you can send it back. As people who have worked in the food service industry, it's fine. If you're not doing it, someone else most definitely is, so our day is already miserable. You might as well eat the food you want <laughs> and leave a nice tip. Oh no, it's always <laughs> better to send it back because you're going to leave less of a tip or you're going to leave <laughs> unhappy. And that just makes me feel bad as like a server, you know? Just send the food back. And it's not the server. It's not the server's fault anyway. It's no, the it's the chef's fault. And most of the time, those guys are not even doing their jobs. They're just sitting around in the back barely putting anything together. No, send it back. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though. I worked in restaurants far longer than I wanted to. <laughs> All right. All right. To flow with the system of life, you want to become aware that your subconscious mind is like a computer. Garbage in, garbage out. If you put negative thoughts in, then negative experiences come out. Yes, it takes time and practice to learn the new ways of thinking. Be patient with yourself. When you are learning something new and the old pattern returns, are you going to say, oh, I didn't learn anything? Or are you going to say, okay, that's all right, Come on, let's do it again, the new way. Or say you cleared an issue and think you'll never have to deal with it again. How do you know if you've really worked through it unless you test yourself? So you bring up the old situation one more time and watch how you react. If you jump right back into the old way of reacting to it, then you know you haven't really learned that particular lesson and you need to, you need to do more work on it. That's all it means. You have to realize it's a little test to see how far you've come. If you begin to repeat your affirmations, the new statement's a truth about yourself, you give yourself an opportunity to react differently. Whether it's a health problem, a financial one, or a relationship difficulty, if you react in a new way to the situation, then you're on your way to having another issue handled and you can move on to other areas. Remember too that we work on layers at a time. You can reach a plateau and think, I've done it and then some old issue resurfaces and you injure yourself or get sick or you don't get better for some time. Look to see what the underlying beliefs are. It may mean that you have some more work to do because you're going to the next deeper layer. Don't feel that you are not good enough because something you have worked to clear comes up again. When I discovered that I was not a bad person because once again I was facing an old issue, became much easier for me to keep going. I learned to say to myself, Louise, you are doing very well. Look how far you've come. You just need more practice. And I love you. All right. So that is where I'm going to stop for today. We will continue reading this chapter tomorrow. So that concludes today's reading. I feel as though overall, 
This is pretty straightforward. So I don't know that I have a ton of my own thoughts to add to it. Let us look at these comments. Uh, Sandy says, I like my food done right. Darn right. <laughs> Hashtag Sun Taurus. Oh, yes. Oh, Taurus. <laughs> and it really is okay also. Yeah. Uh, Iris says, I was a server in my teens and read way too much into unhappy customers. Mm. Well, obviously, you were a teenager, so that's understandable. Um... And food in this uh, service industries can be very difficult and sometimes people are mean and don't realize that the servers have pretty much no control over the food beyond putting the order in <laughs> and sometimes people are just unhappy and they're unhappy everywhere and it has nothing to do with you oh hi sweetie industry I mean I don't know how long ago your team was but let's say even if it was you know food industry was quite different even just 10 years ago I feel like people are becoming more considerate and aware uh, that you know working at a restaurant is a legitimate job and you know it's people just trying to make a living and that um, you know something incorrect about a dish isn't the end of the world uh, I'll, the only reason I don't send dishes back is mostly because I don't feel like waiting another 30 minutes for a new plate. <laughs> I'm glad you were here, Sandy. Thanks for joining us. Yes, that was cats. All right. So if anyone has any comments or questions about anything, that came up today or about the reading you're welcome to share just flipping through to see if there was anything else i wanted to say um the idea of ordering something from the kitchen uh someone else i know has put it like putting an order in with amazon or an online seller you order it's kind of like uh, doing the affirmations and then the hardest part is not fretting and worrying about if it's happening or if it's working or if anything is going. Just letting it go and continuing on with your life and with your growth. Hi love. What's Hi, going on? Oh, I came in to remind you to let people know that you're doing astrology for next year. Oh. Right. Because there were a couple people commenting on whether or not you could help them with their astrology info. Sure right. Well, welcome to the plugging part of the morning report. <laughs> here we go. Obligatory plug. Sorry, guys. Uh, here we go. It gets longer all the time because I'm always adding things. Um, okay. So, let's talk. If you enjoy the morning metaphysical report and want to continue seeing it, I suggest you like and follow or subscribe to my page or channel. If you like and follow my Facebook page, if you're not on Facebook, the link to my page is in the description of the video. Uh, not only will you catch this every morning, but you will also see all of my other content, which includes free reading videos, moon rituals, crystal healings, and a lot of other things which I'm going to be talking about. Um, sorry, I had an <laughs> Um, yes, do that if you want to keep seeing my work. Uh, my inbox is always open for comments and questions, so please feel free to message me. My Facebook page is the best way to get a hold of me, so again, I refer you there. 
Um, if you would like to learn more about me, the Kitchen Witch, and our work, our spiritual life coaching, visit patreon.com slash freedomdreamcoaching. That link is also in the description of the video. It will talk about our work. There's a lot of public and private content there. It describes the goals we are working towards and how you can support us. Uh, we offer monthly subscriptions through there, and in return for that support, you get exclusive perks and rewards, uh, including access to a private Facebook learning group where I'm teaching private material, uh, access to the exclusive content on Patreon, which is not viewable anywhere else, uh, and that is always being added to all the time, and if you are at a high enough level, that includes free private readings with me, of various lengths and frequencies. So read those thoroughly if any of that interests you. Uh, this broadcast is made possible from support by viewers like yourself. If you would like to make a one-time contribution, you could do so through the PayPal link in, this, in the description of the video. Or if you would like to make an ongoing contribution, um, please sign up for our subscription through Patreon. Oh, thank you, Iris. The learning group is awesome. I highly recommend. Oh, uh, which types of things will you teach for subscribers? That's a good question. Thank you for asking. Um, so, in the private group, I am teaching material to build a foundation for pursuing spiritual practice, psychic abilities, or magic. So, uh, eventually, I will be teaching those skills as well. Uh, not presently, but will be as I continue writing the material. Uh, so right now it's the foundation that comes before that so that you can pursue all those things and build all those skills from a place of personal stability and to reach your best potential when you do pursue those things. Um, and I do have an article there currently about astrology and we'll be adding other things with time. Um, on Patreon, so that's in the Facebook group, on Patreon the exclusive content includes tarot reading tutorials, how to read tarot, tarot spreads, um, it will be including webinars that I'm currently filming. I have the first part of my first webinar available for free publicly on Patreon and my Facebook page, but the second and third part of that webinar will be private only for patrons, and that's how to manifest your best life. I'm also developing, going to be filming another webinar called Intuitive Living, how to incorporate intuition into your daily life and, goal, and to use it to set goals. That will be a private webinar for patrons only or for people who purchase a ticket to watch it. And that includes downloadable workbooks, which are being written. There is currently downloadable content like uh, recipes, because uh, this is also the Patreon for the Kitchen Witch. So. Uh, there's also teaching material for cooking with magical intention. So there is a lot of stuff and there will be a lot more. Mm -hmm. This is a big year ahead. Yes. <laughs> as as I, I get my kitchen built up and I get the materials I need, there's also going to be a lot more cooking tutorials. And I'm going to be going back to the magic tip of the day as part of our morning metaphysical report. Great. Yes, that is one of our goals on Patreon. It's like once we have a certain amount of pledge this month, we will stock our kitchen because we move without anything. So that is not entirely. <laughs> uh, let's see, looking at the comments. I'm glad I could clarify that for you. Thank you for asking. It's a very good question. And I'll try to mention those things when I bring this up in the future. So thank you for that mind jog. And thank you, Iris. Appreciate your feedback. Uh, right, more plugs. Uh, so as I was saying, 
on my Facebook page. If you follow the link and go there, I do have a free webinar available. It is two hours long. It is part one of a three part uh, of the webinar. It's going to, I've broken into three parts. Um, I'm not sure that I will keep this part free forever. I think I'm going to film a, an abbreviated version of it and replace that as the public sample. So I would definitely watch it if you're interested because um, eventually it will get pulled down and replaced with something shorter. Uh, so that way the entire webinar you'll have to purchase to watch it. Um, but it is there now, so check it out. I am trying to keep up with all the other things. Uh, check out my events page on the Facebook page. I do live video events, uh, like moon rituals and live Q&A and discussion videos about medical school subjects. I am also a reader. I offer private readings. Most importantly, I'm offering a new year's reading package. Uh, I'm getting to the astrology thing, which came up, people are asking about astrology readings. Sorry, I'm getting there. Uh, the New Year's reading package includes a 12 card tarot reading uh, called the Astrology Wheel Reading. That tells you about your year ahead and various aspects, and also includes discussion of your year number, which is your year's lesson and theme. Um, for the tarot reading, I don't include an interpretation of your birth chart, but I do use your birth chart to correlate it with the cards to give them a fuller interpretation directly about you. And that package is $100. Uh, I do offer a birth chart interpretation for $50, um, and that will interpret your houses, your signs, and your planets. Uh, I'm not, I am uh, learning the deeper nuances of astrology, so I freely admit I'm not familiar with aspects and degrees, I'm aware of them, but not enough to incorporate them in my readings. However, the houses and planets will give you a lot of information that you can use now, and that is why that reading is $50 only. <laughs> um, so if you're interested in that, feel free to message me directly, Facebook is the best way to get a hold of me. Patreon is the second best way. I think that's all I have to say. <laughs> Sounds like it. Sounds yeah. Like you got it. Uh, that's good enough. Anything I forgot, you can probably find on my Facebook page. Uh, I would like to thank everyone for watching today. I really appreciate you guys. I like starting the day here with you. So I hope that you have a wonderful day ahead. And I will see you all again later today and tomorrow morning. So I hope you'll join me on my page and on Patreon. Have a good one. Bye everybody.